Hello everybody and welcome to Attaché, the show that gets you in, out, and around some of the world's greatest cities. My name is Alex Hunter, I'll be your Sherpa on this international adventure, and today we are in the city by the bay, San Francisco, California. San Francisco, one of the most iconic cities on the planet. The city by the bay effortlessly blends its rich and diverse history with its status as the home to some of the biggest companies in the world. Nestled on the Pacific coast, San Francisco is a breathtakingly beautiful city and one that I was proud to call my home for several years. And because I consider myself a Bay Area native, I'm gonna start the show with a little insider tip. Never ever call it Frisco, we hate that. The San Francisco Bay Area is served by three major airports. San Francisco International, otherwise known as SFO, Oakland, and San Jose. But to get into San Francisco itself, SFO is by far your best bet. So that's what we're gonna focus on for the show today. San Francisco International is a solid airport. Occasionally plagued by weather delays, it is a functional and efficient airport with some great amenities. Now this might sound slightly contrary to conventional wisdom, but I actually recommend that you get to San Francisco Airport early because it's home to a number of rotating exhibits from some of the city's top museums. There's also a fantastic aviation museum that's a recreation of the original passenger terminal at SFO from the 1930s. SFO is also home to my beloved Virgin America, an airline I helped launch back in the heady days of 2007, and I'm therefore hugely biased towards. So if you're flying domestically in the US, I strongly recommend them because all other airlines are terrible. So you've landed at SFO. What's the cheapest, fastest, and best way to get into San Francisco? You're gonna put the sound effects in for that, sound right? Effects, yeah. Cool, all right, let's do it again. So you've landed at SFO. What is the cheapest, <laughs> fastest and best way to get into the city. The bus. Sam Trans buses to San Francisco leave directly from the terminals and cost just two dollars to get you into the city. Uber, Lyft, or a taxi. Outside of rush hour, a taxi or on-demand car is the fastest way to get to San Francisco. Lyft or a taxi will cost between 30 and 40 dollars and take around 25 minutes. Uber has a fixed fee of 65 dollars. Remember, a taxi driver will expect a tip of 10% on top of your fare. May not be the fastest at around 45 minutes or the cheapest at $9, but the BART train is the right balance of speed versus cost. The airport BART station is located in the International Terminal and is well signposted throughout the airport. San Francisco is a beautiful city, so you may be tempted to think, I'm an experienced and strapping outdoorsman, I'll conquer this city on foot. And that's super duper, but here's a word of warning. San Francisco is not always a walkable city. Here's why. So what might look like an easy breezy jaunt on Google Maps is actually a class four death climb, summited by only 12 of the world's elite mountaineers. So other than walking slash climbing, how else do you get around San Francisco? The public transport system here can be described as comprehensive but eclectic. It's a mishmash of trains, subways, buses, taxis, ferries, and light railway. And it's actually one of the few things the locals complain about. We actually asked them to describe the system in, in one word, and, and we got some interesting responses. Dirty, suboptimal, smelly, barf, clever, nasty, gross, and to the of the of to the with just like my mother-in-law. That's not one word, but it, it is creative. But despite those less than glowing endorsements, the system will get you from point A to point B quickly, safely, and cheaply. BART, or Bay Area Rapid Transit, is San Francisco's aging but functional commuter rail and subway service. It has a single line through San Francisco with multiple stops from the airport to the financial district and then on to other parts of the Bay Area. Fares vary depending on how far you're traveling and start at $1.85 for a one-stop journey. A fun little fact about BART is that the announcements are made by the evil robot villain from every 1980s sci-fi movie. 10 car San Francisco milk rate train in 8 minutes. Muni is San Francisco's light rail and subway system. 
It connects the southern and western neighborhoods of the city with downtown, where you can transfer to BART or Caltrain, both of which can take you to other parts of the Bay Area. 90 minutes of travel on Muni costs $2.25. If you're planning on using BART, Muni, or any of the other public transport options in San Francisco, it's worth getting one of these, a Clipper card, the city's stored value system. San Francisco is home to Uber and Lyft, so you barely have to think about maybe considering seeing if there's a car available before 600 of them descend on you like a flock of pissed off futuristic seagulls. <laughs> in San Francisco, you also have Uber Pool, which means you share your ride with someone going in the same direction as you. It's a great way to split the cost and make a new best friend at the same time. Links to both apps are in the notes below. So after our little disagreement in Barcelona, Greg and I have resolved our differences about how many items we cover in each show. Wait, what? No, we didn't. Greg, we did let it go. San Francisco was built on multiculturalism, an almost perfect blend of influence from Asia, Europe, Central America, and right here in the US, has created one of the strongest food cultures in the world. Not to mention the fact that California produces nearly 80% of America's food, so you're almost always getting local or near local ingredients. So if you're hungry or dangerously undercaffeinated like I am right now, this is the place to be. So with an almost endless choice of amazing food, where should you start? So for this food heavy episode of Attaché, we wanted to get some experts in. So we're here with Kenji Lopez Alp, AKA the food lab of SeriousEats.com, and also my personal food god, to ask him if he could pick one thing to eat in San Francisco, what would it be? There's one place I'm gonna eat in San Francisco, it's at Powell's Takeaway. I, I found out about this place because I, I actually have a friend who lives around the corner, and I mean, it's in the back of a liquor shop, so you know, it's not, from the curbside, you don't really notice it. It's like, right, this is one of those places which you're either gonna love or you're gonna hate because it's really wacky, like he does crazy things on the sandwiches, but like everything is just so, all of his ingredients are just so well sourced and like, I mean, you're gonna see, it's, it's crazy. He puts like things that you would never think should go together together and then they end up really great. You know, he's like sort of like the mayor of the neighborhood. Like he knows everybody, he knows all of the local cooks, like they all love him. So he gets, he gets, um, he gets different guys to make, to make things specially for him. Um, and then, yeah, and then runs them as specials or gets guys to do guest sandwiches. So really you're, you're, you're giving away your best secret right now. <laughs> So this one is roast beef with this kind of blue cheese mayo, a slaw, and then some kind of fried onions maybe, and arugula. And I think this one is bacon, semi-hard boiled eggs, broccoli, and some other kind of mayo too, huh? And after devouring two of the best sandwiches I've ever had, we were straight back out to see what other delicious treats San Francisco has to offer. So we asked the good people over on the San Francisco subreddit of reddit.com, what should we eat and why in San Francisco? And before we could even press the submit button, we were bombarded with the same answer, burrito. But surely you could, burrito. Yeah, but what about burrito? So let's go get a burrito. Well, you're probably eating like three days worth of calories here, but at least you're gonna get a workout while you're eating this. This thing weighs a ton. If you're not familiar with a burrito, it's a flour wrap filled with meat, cheese, rice, vegetables, about the size of a baby. <laughs> Couldn't have written that. So what filling should you get in your burrito? According to a recent BuzzFeed poll, the most popular filling is carnitas, which is slow roasted pork, which is then fried in lard. And for those of you that just nearly drowned in your own drool, I apologize. But I endorse that result because carnitas are my favorite too. The West Coast is also home to a burger so good that people travel from all over the world just to smell its salty beef patties. <laughs> The West Coast is also home to a burger so good that people literally travel from all over the world just to try it. Fans of In-N-Out Burger include Gordon Ramsay, Anthony Bourdain, Thomas Keller, even the late, great Julia Child. And it's easy to see why, I mean, look at it. Greg, look at it. And while the menu may look simple, there's a complex web of, Greg, up here, buddy. Thanks. There's a complex web of unpublished options available to the knowledgeable patron. 
Now you can Google search these and find all of the available concoctions, but my favorite is the animal style double double and animal style fries. And a Diet Coke because I'm watching my figure. And yes, even though we're in California, we're going to check out the local fair here at McDonald's because frankly, it would be rude not to. Behold, the jalapeno double, which I shall unveil before your very eyes. I think it's really just a cheeseburger with some cockroaches. I'm. It's quite painful, like terrible, terrible whiskey combined with hot sauce and sadness. I don't recommend it. I'm not even sure what these are. They're crunchy. Oh, this just tastes like heartburn. Seriously, that, that is not, that's even worse than the thing we had in London. Um, the McPepperoni. That got dark quickly. So we're here with internet superstar and facial hair aficionado, uh, Sir Matt Galligan, knighted by the Queen for services to beer. So who better to ask where you get the best beer in San Francisco? I made up a lot of that. Yeah, I think but, you did. Except the beer enthusiast I'll part. take all of it. <laughs> we're at City Beer Store in San Francisco, California. It's the best beer bar in all of San Francisco and arguably Northern California. So we have three different beers that we're trying. What what are they? Why did you pick them? I picked them because, well, you're in from England, so yes. i got to show you off a, a good West Coast IPA. So we have uh, a really good example of a solid single West Coast IPA from Altamont, California, um, or Altamont Brewing. This one is from Alpha Acid Brewing Alpha Company. Alpha Brewing from my hometown. Is it really? From Livermore, California. There you go. It's a great brewery. They, it? They're really killing it these days. This one is from Alpha Acid, uh, which is a double IPA. And it's just fantastic. You should give that one a shot. And then the last one has a little bit more of a story. Here in the Bay Area, we have a new brewery that you really can't even call a brewery. They're called the Rare Barrel. And what they're doing is they're taking other breweries' beers and then giving them a really unique twist by making them sour. <laughs> wow. It is something. If someone's coming into town and they had one beer to pick that was representative of the West Coast, California, yep. San Francisco, that they could probably walk into most bars and get what? What would be a good welcome to California? Well, I would say we'll, we'll give you two. All right, we'll good, give you, We'll give you the extra special and we'll give you the standard. So the, the, the standard would be Lagunitas IPA. It's brewed in Petaluma, California, just a few miles north of here. Really nice IPA example. But if I were coming into town and I've only got a, a day to check stuff out, I would go straight over to Toronado, uh, which is over in the uh, in the Lower Haight uh, neighborhood, and I would get a Russian River Pliny the Elder. But it only comes in shipments once a week and only on Wednesdays. And by the time it's six o'clock here, they're all gone. So you really have to know when to get Write it. Write that but down. That's a good tip. As it's part of these United States, California uses the dollar. Right now the dollar converts to about 70 British pence or P, one euro on the nose, and around a dollar 30 Australian. Check the show notes below for our favorite exchange rate tools. So how much do things cost in San Francisco? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's do the rundown. A cup of coffee will cost you around three dollars. A pint of beer will cost you around five dollars. <laughs> And for the most reliable indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, you're gonna pay about $4.90. Let's talk cash money for a second. One of the annoying things here is that ATMs and cash points will charge you a fee every time you take money out. That's on top of whatever your bank back home might be charging you per transaction. Another small annoyance about money in the US is the rather antiquated payment systems. In restaurants, your bill is brought to you. If you're paying by card, you put the card in the folder, it's taken away to be processed, and then two receipts are brought back. One for you to keep, one for you to add tip to, and then sign, which the restaurant keeps. It's a lot of paperwork for a cheeseburger. Tipping. Now this seems to be our most controversial subject across the three shows that we've done so far. Fierce and bloody battles rage in the comments sections of YouTube, Reddit, Twitter, and Facebook about the correct tipping protocol in the cities that we've covered so far. But the tipping culture in the US is unique and a critical component of the dining experience, so pay attention. 
In almost all cases, the good people that serve your food and drink are not paid the same minimum wage as other hourly workers. In fact, it's a lot less because it's assumed that the difference will be made up in tips. Agree with it or not, think it's a dumb policy or not, it doesn't matter. That's how it works here. So make sure you tip, always. A 15 to 18% tip is customary, unless the experience was totally awful. And even if it was, you should still tip just a little bit less. Why? Because often tips are pulled together and then divided amongst the whole crew. Cooks, dishwashers, busboys, not just waiters and waitresses. Is there an instance where you wouldn't tip at all? It would need to be a really, really bad experience, like one of your friends literally died from eating the food, or the waiter came up and just punched you in the face. If you're mathematically challenged, like I am, here's a little bit of advice when you're trying to calculate the tip. Take a look at your bill. On the bill will be the tax, which is between 8.5 and 9.5%, depending on where you are. If you double that, you'll get a generous tip if you were pleased with the service. So that's the attaché guide to San Francisco. I'm covered in and out, and I've had a great time. But if you think we've missed something in this wonderful city, then leave it in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe because we have some awesome cities coming up for you. But until next time, enjoy. Well, get out of the shot. Jesus Christ.